a project funded by Wisconsin Sea Grant, is looking at how to make yellow perch aquaculture more profitable. The incentive is great. You don't have to be a salesman. If somebody finds out that you're raising fish, customers will be knocking at your door asking if, you, if they can buy the fillets from you because the fish are so popular. One of the investigators is Jeff Mallison, an aquaculture specialist at UW-Madison. So we need to produce a very large number of fingerlings, so it's the cost of producing those that this project is really focused on. Chris Hartleb is another investigator. Hartleb is a biologist at the University of Wisconsin, Stevens Point. The yellow perch have, have always um, had some, some problems being raised. Um, and one of them is, is that early on during this larval period or early life history stage, uh, the yellow perch have suffered large mortalities in the culture ponds. And people haven't um, been able to figure out how to really increase the efficiency of raising them. To address this problem, researchers are examining what the fish like to eat. Graduate student Amanda Prusing is analyzing the stomach content of thousands of yellow perch to determine their dietary preferences. Right now I am taking out pretty much the entire digestive tract of this little yellow perch. Um, and I'm trying to do that so that I can figure out what he was eating. Most of what I was finding in here were Chidorospherichus. What we record here is the fish's weight, its length, its gape, which is the size that it can open its mouth, and all the different zooplankton that are actually found in its diet. We actually have to record the lengths of 20 of each separate zooplankton species. We have, I guess the only big thing that we have in this sample is a Daphnia. The project is also looking at how ponds might best be fertilized so that the fish get the food they prefer. So if we can figure out what's the best type of fertilizer, what's the best application of the fertilizer, and what results in uh, an abundance of prey for these larval perch, then perhaps they'll have better survival, better growth, and that, that can basically increase the efficiency of the yellow perch culture. Uh, what's really available to farmers, fish farmers out there, are either what are called inorganic or organic fertilizers. Inorganic would be phosphorus and nitrogen and carbon. This is what you would buy to fertilize your plants. Fish farmers can add large quantities to their ponds. The other uh, fertilizer we're trying is organic fertilizer, which commonly you know is manures. So we're adding manure to the pond. In some cases, the researchers are adding both. Their work has already taught them something. And that you actually have to start fertilizing the ponds before you put the fish in them. Because it takes time for the fertilizer to break down and to be utilized by the algae or the plankton in the system. And you really want the plankton to be blooming, that is, have large numbers of them in the pond, when you put the fish in, and at the exact moment the fish actually want to start eating them. And then really you are fertilizing plants. It's actually the algae that will use that right away. Um, and then what you're hoping is that you're setting up a food chain and that you're hoping then that the plankton consume the algae and then the fish consume the plankton. Finally, the project is looking at feed training. For this, the fish are harvested and put in indoor tanks for several weeks. It goes by many names, feed training or weaning or even domesticating the fish, um, essentially trying to get them onto an artificial diet. This is a mixture of krill, freeze-dried krill, and a commercial trout diet. And usually we'll put it all the way around this little disc. And what happens is this disc rotates really, really slowly throughout the day. So as the day progresses on, little pieces of food will start dropping into the tanks. So during that phase, it can be kind of tricky because the fish have never seen a commercially prepared food item and it looks like a little brown chunk or pellet. Uh, and they've never seen something like that. So now you're asking them to completely change their diet and start feeding on something artificial. During the feed training, other things can be changed too. If you can manipulate things such as water temperature as well as lighting, um, you can make the conditions ideal for the fish to want to feed. When the feed training is complete, the fish are returned to the ponds to finish growing. The project is only about halfway through its three years, but the researchers have learned a lot already. And at least on the fertilization side, you know, one thing we found out just because Wisconsin weather differs year to year um, is that it appears that the temperature, uh, air temperature, water temperature, is greatly affecting uh, the effectiveness of the, the fertilizer that's going into the ponds. 
Um, and then on the, the diet side of it, I think what Amanda has been mentioning is, is that it appears that the yellow perch, though they have a diverse diet, it appears they, they favor some of the smaller organisms, um, such as what she was talking about, such as the copepodnoplii, or the early stage of some of the plankton, uh, when they're really small. If the project is successful, we'll be seeing a lot more yellow perch on the menus of Midwestern restaurants. This work is brought to you by Wisconsin Sea Grant, science for the sustainable use of Wisconsin's Great Lakes resources.